All right, guys. Um, it's Thursday, as promised. I'm back again with a little snippet. I thought this episode I would try and cover some quick dynamic pose processes that I have. Um, this first little snippet that I'm going to do, it's going to be my be kind of like breaking down the figure using big blocky shapes, cylindrical shapes, if you will, to kind of like lay out. Uh, running pose, if you will, I guess, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Like I said, I'm still new to this, still trying to figure out how to pull this off exactly. But this is kind of like your basic way, basic way to lay out a pose. You use a lot of cylinders and circles to kind of define the forms. Uh, the way I do it now is a little bit different. It's a little more advanced stuff that I picked up along the way, working as a pro. Um, for me now, I usually start actually with a silhouette of the pose that I want. Like, I'll sketch out a silhouette much like I'm doing right now. And you can kind of see, get a little bit more of a dynamic flow, a little bit more of a dynamic shape when you do something like this. It works well for me. I'm going to try and break down both of these for you so you can see the end result, see how things come out. So as you see, I kind of lay out this. Both poses are similar. But I feel the second one is a little bit more dynamic. It's a little bit more fluid, a little bit more open. So I'm going to go in and start just blocking in some of the shapes, defining some of the forms. See this guy kind of take face, it's taking shape. His face looks a little angry, a little badass. But, you know, that's how it is. I'm going to go chunk in some muscle areas. Start with the shoulders and the pecs find the neck a little bit. As you can see, I'm able to do this quickly, but only because I've done this a million times over and over. So this guy is kind of like running at you. I'm going to go in. I'm going to start filling in all this silhouette with just the shapes and details that would be used to define this figure's pose and expression and what we're going for. As you can see, it's pretty fluid. It's pretty dynamic. It's, um, Something that definitely comes with time and practice. It's not something I would suggest to anybody who's just starting out. Unless, you know, why not? I mean, screw it. If you're going to try it, try it. You know, play with it. Who knows? Maybe you'll get there eventually through repetition. It's kind of some of the ways that I've done it. Um, but as you can see, we're chunking in his arms. Leaving those muscles a little defined. It's looking a little bit more more badass by the second going and chunking his legs and of course like definitely not bound by this silhouette that I did so I'm gonna fix it a little bit because he had some baby legs popping off there and nobody wants to get saved by someone with baby legs so go and adjust my eraser go and fix this clean it up a little bit and we got another baby leg to fix over here which we will do like so dropping some dark areas and I'm just kind of doing that to define shape and space on his figure so fix that leg but still as you can see he's pretty dynamic he's pretty cool looking he's running ready for some action just keep going adding a little more line weight a little more detail and of course this is very rough that's kind of why I chose to do this in Photoshop just because it was easier for me to do it roughly. I'm not really trying to give you a finished product here as I did in the first episode. So we're going to start connecting the dots here with this guy. I'm going to start defining his chest much the same way we did with the last one. We're going to follow those initial cylinders though a little more closely than we did with the silhouette. So as you can see he's taking form and he still looks pretty cool. I don't know if he's necessarily as intense or as fluid or as organic. I think you lose a little bit of that energy the more you think about things sometimes. Not that you shouldn't think about things. You should always think about what you're drawing. Just don't draw. But I think there's something to be said about just being fluid and going with your gut with things. So connect these dots. And as you can see, both are very similar poses. I would say 
that we'll just marker these guys. We got A and we have B. I think B is a little more dynamic. It looks a little bit more like what you might want to see in a comic book. Of course, A could get there as well. It's just a little bit more work. So with this step, I'm just going to go in and drop some shadows, just trying to find these two characters a little bit more. Like I said, this is all very simple. It's all very crude, but it's more or less just to give you an idea of the way that I try and think of things. And I definitely think in the B column more than the A column, just because I think when I try and think in the A column, I overthink things too much and I lose a lot of the energy and the kinetic feel that my artwork tends to convey. So we're gonna drop in some shadows, a little bit of down lighting, if you will. This guy's looking pretty cool. He looks like he's ready to kick some butt to find his legs. He don't get he doesn't have those baby legs anymore, so that's good. So continue to kind of chunk in some of that stuff like so pretty damn fancy so we got an old Mr. B just about chunked in let's say at this point C we'll go up fool around with A now let's chunk some of him in yeah, I mean, a lot of these techniques have just really worked them out, especially in my time working in studio environments, like working at Wildstorm for eight, nine years, like I did. Picking up tricks and techniques from other artists. Just kind of chunking in this guy. look at these two side by side okay like I said you know he's solid he takes up space he has form for the most part his face is a little lacking we call him mr. no face B he, I feel he just looks way more dynamic way more super cool there's a lot more weight to his muscles he's coming at you looks pretty cool so these are two different approaches that you could take neither one in my opinion is better than the other you can kinda play with both of them if you like the idea here was just to kinda give you a couple different approaches on dynamic figure drawing in under 10 minutes because that's all I have to really spend on this but I also wanted to go and thank all of you for your comments that you've given so far and for subscribing. Let's soup up B here. Go in and give him a fancy cape. So you can just throw in a couple lines and all of a sudden you have the newest, most badass superhero on the block. Put him some fancy belts on. Some spiky hair. Cool superheroes all spiky hair. Little chest emblem. There you go. Oh, wait. Call him. What should his name be? Hmm. That's right. Mr. Super Cool. Because he's pretty super cool. But yeah, guys. Thanks again. Like I said, I'll be back next Tuesday with another episode. Maybe tackle a little female figure drawing. That's always fun. So, until then, make sure to subscribe. Give me a like. Give me a comment, and I will be talking to you soon.